Item number, SCP-250. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-250 is to be kept in a 50 meter by 50 meter enclosure, simulating a prairie environment, with padded steel walls 15 meters high and one meter thick. The temperature must remain between 20 and 28 degrees Celsius by day and between 10 and 14 degrees Celsius by night, with an average humidity of no more than 8%. This serves the dual purpose of ensuring that SCP-250's overall behavior remains predictable and of maintaining the physical integrity of its component parts. Vegetation within the enclosure is to be maintained on a weekly basis. Although SCP-250 does not physically require nutrition, it is to be fed one live adult pig every two days in order to regulate its aggression and hunting instincts. The remnants of its meal are to be removed from its enclosure no less than one hour after the onset of its nightly dormancy period. This includes cleaning any residual biological debris from SCP-250's physical components with compressed air and whisk brooms. At no point during cleaning are any of SCP-250's physical components to be moved by more than one meter in any direction, as this risks disrupting its dormancy. Dormancy ends within five minutes of sunrise. Access to SCP-250's containment during its activity period is prohibited. Description SCP-250 is the animate fossil skeleton of an allosaur, originally identified as Allosaurus fragilis. However, an incomplete scientific article found in the personal effects of paleontologist Dr. indicates that this classification may have been erroneous. It consists of 153 disarticulated bones and 14 plaster and fiberglass replacements held together and animated by an unknown force. Study of this force is hindered by SCP-250's aggressive behavior, which has been assessed by Foundation paleozoologists as being well within theoretical norms for an Allosaurus. SCP-250 emulates what are presumed to have been the standard daily activities of a living Allosaurus. It wanders its enclosure by day, enters a state of dormancy by night, and will attempt to kill and devour anything which it perceives as suitable prey, including humans. Its lack of organs does not seem to affect its behavior in any way, except in that the remains of any prey it consumes will inevitably fall out of the gaps in its skull, neck, and ribcage at which point it ignores them. SCP-250 was first excavated as an 80% complete skeleton in 19 Records from the excavation do not include any report of anomalies. Several years later, it was transferred to an undisclosed museum of natural history in where it was assembled, mounted, and put on display. On the night of SCP-250 seized and killed an intruder to the museum. Although damage to the intruder's remains was so extensive as to render forensic identification impractical, they were conclusively shown to not be those of paleontologist Dr. whose office in the museum was extensively vandalized that night and who has not been seen since. Foundation personnel embedded within museum staff reported the incident, and SCP-250 was taken into custody. Item Number SCP-317 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-317-1 is to be preserved in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Requests for tissue samples from SCP-317-1 must be made in writing. All research into tissue samples from SCP-317-1 must be in compliance with Class V biohazard protocols. Examination of SCP-317-2 must be done in Class 3 clean room facilities. Requests for examination of 3172 must be made in writing. SCP-3173 has been disassembled. The parts are stored in separate locations. Requests for examination of 3173 must be made in writing to two separate O5 level personnel. No two components of SCP-3173 may be brought within 100 kilometers of each other. Description SCP-3171 is the cadaver of a sapient reptilian entity, tentatively identified as a previously unknown species 
of Pachycephalosaurid. Subject was bipedal, female, and three meters tall, and wore clothing made from synthetic polymers. Subject also wore corrective lenses. Subject was largely herbivorous and had prehensile digits. Subject's metabolism was adapted to a higher atmospheric oxygen content, and therefore, subject wore a respirator device when not in its quarters. Biochemical analysis post-mortem, rhodopsins, mitochondria, homeobox genes, cytochrome P450, confirms that SCP-3171 shared common ancestry with current Earth life. Autopsy records are available in Archive 317B-685. In the 40 days between its arrival in Foundation custody and its death from a lactobacillus infection, SCP-3171 learned to communicate via a combination of sign language, crude vocalizations, and drawings. Video Archive 317B-36 shows interview sessions with SCP-3171. Drawings made by SCP-3171 are available in Archive 317B-42. General access, basic anatomical figures, interactions between itself and Foundation personnel, demonstration of knowledge of mathematics, demonstration of knowledge of chemistry, demonstration of knowledge of nuclear physics, and Archive 317B-58, restricted access, circuit diagrams, mechanical schematics, data expunged. SCP-3172 is the personal effects of SCP-3171. A tunic, a robe, a tool belt, six tools, corrective lenses, an oxygen mask, three empty oxygen tanks, a fire-damaged document pouch made from synthetic polymers and its fire-damaged contents, and a fire-damaged digital camera whose contents were unrecoverable. SCP-3173 is the fire-damaged remains of what is believed to have been a time machine, which SCP-3171 was attempting to repair at the time it was taken into custody by the Foundation. Preliminary testing of the intact components revealed data expunged, at which point all testing was halted and SCP-3173 was disassembled. Note: There's something wrong with this one, people. A technological civilization should have left some trace in the stratigraphic record. If there was a Holocene epic before us, where did the evidence go? Doctor… It's not just the complete lack of trace in the fossil record, it's the species. How could it have been a pachycephalosaurid that developed intelligence? They were at best average for Cretaceous fauna. Why not a Trudontid, an Ornithomimid, or another small theropod? There's something going on here that we're missing. Dr. M. Item Number SCP-346 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-346 is to be kept in a store-bought birdcage, at least 1 meter in height, at 1.5 meters in width either way. No locks or additional security measures are required as SCP-346 is no stronger nor smarter than the average parakeet. SCP-346's cage is to contain at least two water dishes with standing perches to be refilled daily and fed a diet of five to six medium-sized live crickets daily. SCP-346's cage also contains one tree branch for perching, scratching, and climbing, one open-top nest purchased at a commercial pet store lined with moss and a string with bright colored bells on it for entertainment. The bottom of SCP-346's cage is covered with corncob-based biodegradable bedding and is to be cleaned out and replaced every other week. During cleaning, SCP-346 may be either held by hand, allowed to fly around a room with a closed door, or placed in a paper bag with a book over the end to be held out of the way. SCP-346's cage is held in Dr. Wright's office and may not be moved without her permission. Despite SCP-346's habit of nibbling fingertips and pulling strands of hair, SCP-346 poses no danger upon escape and may be recaptured, gently, with either a net or by hand. Description SCP-346 is a small member of an unidentified family of pterodactyl, 
ancient flying reptiles. SCP-346 is approximately the size of a small bat and has very lightweight bone structure. Although its head, wings, and legs are bare, its main body is covered with a soft coat of fur-like, dark-colored down. The origin of SCP-346 is unknown and was purchased by Agent in a small pet shop in Brazil, being marketed under the name Congo Mato. The owner of the pet store claims not to know where SCP-346 came from, having purchased a set of eggs off the black market, of which only one, SCP-346, hatched, believing them to be from a rare species of parrot. Some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. Testing has revealed that SCP-346 is an adult, but appears to have had its growth somewhat stunted by malnutrition and being raised in a small, cramped cage. SCP-346 is also a male, and has been nicknamed by staff who find the little creature's appearance charming as Terry. SCP-346 behaves in a manner similar to birds and bats, being most active at dawn and dusk, and energetically flying in whatever space it's given snapping up insects either out of the air or off the ground in branches. SCP-346 chirps and squeaks in a manner similar to birds and rodents, and is most vocal during the evening hours. Some describe this as endearing, others as annoying. Addendum 1 After the discovery of SCP-1265, some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. However, the existence of SCP-346 implies that these alleged colonies, should they exist, do not possess the same anomalous properties as SCP-1265. Addendum 2 It has been suggested that further investigation into the origins of SCP-346 should be taken, in the hopes of finding a large colony of similar creatures perhaps indicative of a surviving member of the pterodactyl lineage, or a rip in space and time. SCP-346 should be kept well away from SCP-529, as per request of Dr. Wright's. Item Number SCP-363 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-363 specimens are contained in a 2 meter by 2 meter by 2 meter room that is to be constantly illuminated by high-powered lighting. This lighting must be connected to multiple redundant power sources, and in case of total system failure, Mobile Task Force Ada-7 is to be dispatched to assess the threat. SCP-363 is to be fed 20 lab mice, administered once every 48 hours. Description Ostensibly, SCP-363 are identical to Scolopendra gigantea, or the Amazonian giant centipede. Dietary needs are identical, and DNA inspection has proven no dissimilarities to normal S. gigantea. SCP-363 is, under normal circumstances, the appropriate size for S. gigantea. In darkness, darkness defined here as any level of light under two lux, which it actively seeks out, however. SCP-363 will grow rapidly and erratically, to sizes up to and exceeding 10 meters by 2 meters. SCP-363 does not retain the form of a centipede under these conditions. So far, reports have documented proboscises, tentacles, highly elongated mandibles, an inconsistent number of eyes and legs, and, in one case, data expunged. SCP-363 will revert back to normal size and appearance after 2-3 hours of illumination of a level of at least 50 lux. SCP-363 will attack any animal emitting body heat, and appears to be able to detect and hunt in total darkness. It is assumed it uses other senses to hunt, with vision in a secondary position. Reproductive cycle of SCP-363 is similar to that of normal S. gigantea, with one difference. Rather than in a cluster of leaves and dirt, eggs are laid and fertilized in the cavity of paralyzed data expunged, followed by death. Addendum 1 Note from Dr. Scalder We've determined that fire seems to scare or ward off SCP-363. 
In light of this, we have equipped three of the members of MTF-807, Creepy Crawlies, with military issue M2A-17 flamethrowers. Addendum 2, Incident Report of Breach. Document Number, 363 Alpha, Breach 1. Personnel Involved, MTF-807, Date, 21-5-2003, Location, Site Description Attempted retrieval of SCP-363 specimen during power failure slash containment breach. Start of audio log. MTF-807 Commander Johnson. Pertz. Any word from technical on distortion cameras? Contactsman Pertz. No dice, Commander. Complete equipment failure throughout the sector. C. Johnson. All right. Night vision on. Motion sensors go. Fredman, McShawn, Adelaire, report to rendezvous point. Lieutenant McShawn, copy that, Commander. Subteam Hornet coming in. Over. C. Johnson, Subteam Wasp, come in. Radio silence. C. Johnson, Wasp, do you copy? Over. Unknown. Shouting. Jesus Christ Almighty, torch that! Signal cuts out. C. Johnson. Damn it. Oden. Oden, can you hear me? What is your position? Over. Lieutenant Oden. Outside of Lab 8. We found it, sir. It's holed up in there. It got DNA. Over. C. Johnson. Casualty. L. Oden. Mangled leg, sir. We scared the in there with the flamethrower. Don't think it's coming out. Are they fixing the power yet? Over. C. Johnson. Forget about that, Oden. Tell Von Hauer to keep his flamer trained on the door. Hornet, can you hear me? Over. Al McShawn. Loud and clear, sir. C. Johnson. Forget the rendezvous. Relocate to Lab 8. Don't engage yet. Copy. Lieutenant McShawn. Going- Holy f What was that? Adelaire, do you see anything? Over. Flamer Adelaire. Extensive swearing. There's another one of those in here. Second containment breach, Commander. C. Johnson. Has it seen you? Over. F. Adelaire. I don't reckon, sir. C. Johnson. Good. Try to keep it that way. Pertz. How many of those things did they keep in here? C. M. Pertz. Relays question to contact. Eight, sir. C. Johnson. Good God. Okay, tell him fuck the preservation and detonate the gas charges. CM Pertz. They, uh, they can't, sir. C. Johnson. Why the fuck not, Pertz? Data expunged. L. Oden. So we're all fucked three days from Sunday. Good to know. Orders, Commander. C. Johnson. Fuck them all and burn it down, Oden. Tell Von Hauer and Adelaire to set fire to Lab 8, then split up and do a sweep of the area. Neutralize all hostile centipede- L. Oden. Copy that. C. Johnson. Pertz. Still no contact with Blackfly? C. M. Pertz. Blackfly, report in. Radio silence. C. M. Pertz. No Blackfly. C. Johnson. I gathered, Pertz. All right. Oden, status report. Unknown. Gasping. Groaning. C. Johnson. Th who's that? Identify. Unknown. Flamer Tell, sir. C. Johnson. What is your status, Tell? What of Blackfly? Over. F. Tell. Dead. Everyone. C. Johnson. Repeat that, Tell. F. Tell. Screaming. We're all f***ing dead down here, Commander. I saw one of them. One of them pulled Doug apart. Just, just in half. It laid all these eggs. And another one squirted this jizz over them. They hatched. They hatched so fast. More of those things. Ate him so fast. Dozens of them. Eating Howard now. I liked Howard, Commander. Eating him. Eating him. C. Johnson. Calm down, Tell, for God's sake. 
What's your personal status? F. Tell. They're on my legs. I can see them, but I can't feel it. Biting me. Radio silence. F. Tell. I feel something. Burning. Like bubbling. C. Johnson. Tell. Self-terminate. That's an order. I'm sorry. F. Tell. Unintelligible. C. Johnson. God damn it, Tell. Do you copy? Immediate self-termination. F. Tell. Warped voice. The flesh is like milk to us. C. Johnson. What the hell are you saying, Tell? F. Tell. We are one. C. Johnson. I think he's gone crazy. F. Tell. One is all. Cracking noises. C. Johnson. Wasp. Hornet. Come in. Radio silence. C. Johnson. Wasp. Hornet. Come in, damn it. L. Oden. Same warped voice as documented with Flamer Tell. We are here. There are many. C. Johnson. Pertz. Tell command we're evacuating the premises. Mission failure. C.M. Pertz. Sir, yes, sir. C. Johnson. Airstrike and full bombardment once we're out. Nope. Interrupted by crashing sound. Jesus Christ, what? Tearing sounds. Five minutes of radio silence. C. Johnson presumed dead. Unknown individual. Presumed C.M. Pertz. Here. O Israel, YHWH is our God, YHWH alone. Gunshot. End of audio log. Postscript. Sight firebombed. Several undamaged and fertilized SCP-363 eggs retrieved. Contained. All members of MTF-807 presumed dead. New team established. O5. Addendum 3. Interview. Interviewed. Janitor R. Interviewer. Data expunged. Referred to as I. Forward. Interview conducted after said janitor professed to a possible SCP sighting after firebombing of site. Begin log. I. Hello, R. Please sit down. Thank you. Now. You said you saw something after the firebombing. Care to expand on that? Janitor. It was, well, one of those guys from the MTF you had stationed there. Ada 7. One of those guys, yeah. I. Do you know his name, perchance? Janitor. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him once. That guy. Tell. One of the flamers. I. Are you sure it was him? Janitor. No, no, I ain't sure. It, it looked like him, for sure. But there were all these things growing out of him. Like insect legs, but all in random places. From his chest, his arms, and one of them was poking out of his eyeball. His eye was just gone. And his mouth. There were these, like, these pinchers. Mandibles. All black. And there were these things... I continue. Janitor, these things, centipedes, crawling in and out of holes in his flesh. He looked at me, his one eyed gone all, it looked all like a bug's eye with facets and stuff. And he laughed. I think he did anyway. I, and then, Janitor, he, he ran away. I, thank you. End log. Addendum 4. Security level 4. Announcement. Signal of standard MTF anti-defection tracker located data expunged. 18 miles away from site. Signal associated with tell. Tracking procedure initialized. Infection risk to be negated at all costs. 05. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.